Hello everyone, you are in Endurance Laser Lab. In this video I want to tell you about limits and problems with laser beam focusing. So as you know, endurance lasers uh, primarily offer uh, different types of uh, laser attachments with uh, uh, laser diodes inside and um, everyone is looking for better beam quality. So ideally uh, it should be like one very tiny spot. But in fact, uh, in a laser diode, we have the beam that has two axes. So one is uh, fast and one is slow. So at the beginning, you have this shape of laser beam spot. So and then you with a lens, you try to make it smaller. But the fact is that you still get this type of rectangle. So this uh, part called uh, fast axis because it has a bigger, uh, wider size and this is slow axis. So how it's look, uh, let, let me show you. So this is a laser and we have the beam that goes like this in one direction. So let's call it fast axis, fast axis. And it's, if you look it from, well, for example, from up. And if you look from the right, then uh, the laser uh, divergence can be is a little bit smaller. So this is slower axis. And the problem is that uh, you need to minimize to make the smaller both sides. So we, we use, use uh, mostly spherical or aspherical lenses that work in both directions the same. So they decrease slow axis and they decrease fast axis. So at, at the end, you still get a smaller rectangle. So uh, in our uh, previous research, we decided that we can add a half semi-cylindrical lens to uh, work on fast axis. And then we get it from, from this, oops, from this, we get to some sort of square and then we can make it with a second lens so here we use a semi-cylindrical lens and here we use a spherical or well, spherical doesn't really matter and we get very small small laser beam the problem is that you still have these angles at the beginning that even if you make it smaller, like a square on certain distance, then you, and you get a very small at the end, the problem with a, we face a problem with a focal depth. So what's focal depth is? So once you have uh, the laser, the laser beams that goes like here, and you think that, okay, here is a small, the smallest area, that called focal depth. So it means that initially here is laser is not focused. Well, let's say that we have a lens here. Okay. And uh, then we have the same, it, it increases. So the thing is that focal depth has, is very important because once you focus, you need to make sure that you can move your laser up and down and you'll still be in focus. So this is a, uh, the, the space in the, uh, on the laser beam with the smallest spot. So focal depth is very important. So for example, with short focal lens, you have a better focus. Let's say like this, you can make it smaller focus, but then you have uh, laser becomes, uh, becomes unfocused as well. So you get everything in a very, very tiny spot. But then if you, for example, 100 microns up and down, you are not in focus. So this is short focal. And long focal lens, oops, long, um, you have a better situation. So it goes like this, beams. So it means that you have depth, laser beam depth, bigger. And that's why, yeah, you have 
probably bigger uh, laser beam spot as well, but you have also bigger uh, focal depth. So that is uh, the limitation we are working on, and this is a big problem for uh, most diode lasers. With, uh, so you need to take care of slow axis and fast axis. So another problem that we have is modes. As you know that our lasers are multi-mode. Yeah, let me... Uh, multi mode. You can learn more about, uh, about multi-mode lasers in Google. And uh, what is very important that the mode is uh, some sort of property of the laser beam inside of resonator. So I'm not going to spend too much time explaining how a uh, diode laser resonator works, but we have like two mirrors uh, and we have an active like multi-layer uh, structure of the laser diode and we have uh, plus and we have minus power. So when we got power, when we have current, on the laser diode that starts to generate emission of uh, photons. So atoms becomes excited, then they lose their energy, and once they relax, relax, have relaxation, they emit photons. So these photons start to move from one mirror to the other. And they move it like this. So it goes like this, 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 this. And the thing is that multi-mode at the end, once they escape, finally, when their energy is high enough to go through this mirror. So this is full reflective mirror. This is half, uh, half um, a reflective mirror. Once they have enough energy, they go out. And you see this, these waves or particles going from the laser. And once you have different modes, that means that they have different uh, wavelengths. Well, actually not wavelengths, but wave properties. So it means that you have different waves that are going out. And you have some problems with uh, coherence, you have some problems with focusing. So once you have one, la one a wave, so then you can focus it, focus it as small as the wavelength range. So for example, 445 nanometers uh, can be focused into 445 nanometer laser beam spot. Once you have multi-modes, so it's kind of difficult to focus them uh, in a good way. So I showed you previously as well about different um, different axes and divergence. So let's talk about lens operations as well. So let's imagine that you have a um, laser beam that goes some, somehow like this and can be focused in a certain distance at called focal range. So ideally you should have very small and very tiny spot, but in fact you have some aberrations that occur over here. So that means that you do not have accurate focus, that's because of property of glass, so no ideal lens, lens on the market, and you have some sort of aberrations that's actually going from or near this spot. So you cannot really have all power in one spot. So that is a problem with a laser uh, optical systems and with uh, that lens have operations. Uh, you probably know that we invented the way how we can combine two beams together while using polarizing beam splitter. So beam splitter works quite easily. W one part can go straight 
one laser beam and the second reflects. So this one, well, refracts and this one reflects. The thing, the way how, why you can do this, because you need to have different properties of those two beams. So they could be different wavelengths. For example, you have 445 nanometer or and 808. It's not working with, uh, so it can combine two different wavelengths. Or another option, you can have the same wavelengths, for example, 445 nanometers here, and you can have the property, it's very, uh, another property of the laser beam, um, polarizing vector. So this one could be S polarizing, and here, let's say 445, you have, okay, here we have S, here we have P. So then you can combine, and at the end you have 445, nanometer wavelength and you have S and P combined combined beams and the good thing that it's combined exactly at the same beam so one goes let's say like this goes like this so you get like a combined beam here so the problem is why we cannot add more beams here because we only have S, P, and S polarizing properties. I also considering, and we are working and uh, looking for different materials, where you can combine, let's say, different wavelengths that are close enough. Let's say 440, 445, 450. The ideal, it would be the same. So you have like uh, three different beams with two different properties. So it means that you can have something like uh, six beams together. In theory, it should be working and uh, that's possible. In practice, it's not really easy to do because there are no such uh, beam splitters or beam combiners, vice versa, always in optics, what goes outside the same way if you do it in reverse, should be the same on reverse. So in, in theory, you have a lot of cubes, splitters, but the range from one and from a second and a third, doesn't matter, should be at least 50 nanometers. Okay, so that means that you can combine, let's say, 450 plus 400, oh, okay, 500, and 550 etc so that's that's working because then you have pretty different wavelengths that you combine but uh, we only have powerful diodes in range of 440 maybe to 450 nanometers but we don't have something here from 500 to 800 so we have also powerful diodes for 808 nanometers, so we will uh, start working on that, but um, also we would need to have different lens structure because uh, for different wavelengths you would need different optics and also beam will be different. So here you have one divergence, one fast and slow axis, here you have another, you have one angle here, so it could be another problem for focusing. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's already 15, uh, 14 minutes trying to explain. So I briefly tried to explain all cases and all problems that uh, we are facing and maybe most uh, laser manufacturers and diode manufacturers have. So we are still working. And if you have any questions, ideas, you're always uh, welcome to share and ask. Yeah, and I decided that I want to tell you Another thing, uh, yeah, just answering questions why you cannot, for example, have different lasers uh, aiming in one spot and uh, then focusing them. For example, let's say the one laser goes here, here, 
here and here. So the problem is that you would never have uh, any good quality laser spot here and absolutely zero focal depth. So it means that you only have all power concentrated here in this on this range. But once you you miss it, um, you have you have bigger laser beam spot. So this is this is a problem. Uh, some. Sometimes people ask me if uh, you can use some optical systems. For example, there is a system called uh, Lens Duck. Uh, so it works like this. And there's an optical system that can be used for pumping. Uh, so you have a lot of diodes here and close enough to this system. And then you have all these beams that are uh, beaming inside this lens duct system. So the problem is just remains the same. So you have, you are losing your beam quality. So as you know, reflective uh, angle is equal to the angle where the uh, laser beam hits. So the, those angles have to be the same. So once it's, should be the same and it's it's uh, related to all types of lasers so at the end once you have these reflective beams you also have a just mass a complete mass of uh, angles over here so once they all hit uh, the surface they have a complete mass over here so yes you have a smaller a smaller spot here but with completely, you know, all angles. So it's also almost impossible to focus the laser that goes from this, uh, let me write it, lens duck system. So I uh, hope that you like this video. Please share it with your friends. And it was a very small and brief, you know, course <laughs> for beginners uh, in optics and problems with focusing uh, diode lasers. So if you have any comments, ideas, please share with us and we will be happy to answer your questions. Visit our website endurancelasers.com, our online store endurance-lasers.com and have a wonderful experience with endurance lasers. Bye-bye.